I would like to see Article 50 revoked. That is preferable to uh, cashing out of the EU with no deal. And of course, Scotland voted to remain in the first place, so it would be honouring the wishes of the majority of people in Scotland. But of course, you know, we've been arguing for some time now that it should go back to the people. The, the government has failed, uh, absolutely failed, to deliver on the results of the 2016 referendum. Uh, they have no credible way forward now. And when Parliament and government fails, then it seems to me the only sensible thing to do is put the people back in charge. That would be one of the options probably put before Parliament this week. You have said time and time again that Scotland wants to stay inside the single market and the customs union. And it may well be that there is a majority of some form of so-called soft Brexit customs union and single market inside the House of Commons. Will the SNP's 35 MPs be part of that new consensus? Well, that's not our first preference. Our first sure. preference is to remain, and the best way of achieving that is to have another referendum or to revoke Article 50. At the moment, I think it's fair to say that the option of remaining is not off the table and it's not beyond the bounds of possibility by any stretch of imagination. So as long as our first preference remains an option, that's what the SNP will back. You have said again and again that a no-deal Brexit would be disastrous for Scotland and your government calculates it would cost perhaps 100,000 Scottish jobs. Now the safest, surest way of stopping that happening would be the SNP to hold their noses and vote for the Prime Minister's deal. Well, all of our analysis says the Prime Minister's deal would cost Scottish jobs and uh, reduce the size of the Scottish economy. Well, now, not as much. Well, look, I don't think it is acceptable uh, or, or certainly desirable for any of us to be in a position of having to choose disaster instead of catastrophe. And that's what that choice of the Prime Minister's deal and no deal would represent. Uh, and, you know, the Prime Minister's deal, just to recap, takes us out of the EU, takes us out of the single market, takes us out of the customs union, gives no clarity honoring, about the future honoring relationship. Honouring the result of the 2016 referendum? Well, you know, with respect, not honouring the result of the 2016 referendum in the country that I'm First Minister of, which is Scotland. Do you think that Theresa May herself is now part of the problem? If you were in yes. her cabinet, would you be telling her to go now? I would be telling her to go. I think she's been part of the problem for some considerable time. I think if we were in any normal period in British politics, she would be long gone, but the conventional rules are not applying. I suppose the one caveat to that is I think she is effectively out of power now and perhaps debating her position is becoming more and more incidental by the day. What's important now I think is that the House of Commons sees these control and it must do that next week. Nevertheless she has negotiated the only deal that's on offer, the only deal on the table and a lot of people in the EU look at what's going on in British politics and say that people like you are playing party politics and you're the thing that you should be doing is voting for her deal and avoiding no. Well, that, that's not the impression I get of what people in the EU think of uh, Scotland or the Scottish government. Uh, I, I know what they think of the UK government just now, okay. and it's probably not repeatable. But Theresa yeah. May negotiated the only deal she was able to negotiate because of the red line she imposed. Mark Rutter, the Dutch Prime Minister, said it's not Theresa May's mistake that we are where we are. It's because too many people have so far played party politics on this issue. My hope is that the UK Parliament will next week do the sensible thing and vote yes to of the course, deal. Look, I understand that position from the EU. They negotiated in good faith with Theresa May. It's not their fault that she imposed all of these red lines, uh, constraining herself from the word go. It's not their fault that she triggered Article 50 before she had a clue what she wanted to do. So I don't blame European leaders for just wanting to see this done. But, you know, I have to look at what's in the best interest of Scotland. I also care about what's in the best interest of the UK. And Theresa May's deal is not in the best interest of people across the UK. Neither is no deal. So let's, over the next few weeks, and this opportunity that has been afforded to us, try to find a better way forward. The Scottish Government's been given £92 million by the British Government for no deal preparations. In this financial year, how much of that has gone to Scottish Councils? Uh, we give Scottish Councils a global settlement. We've just passed our budget in February. And There's nothing in the budget that suggests you give them money for and Andrew, I can say with absolute certainty as First Minister that if there is a no deal Brexit, 92 million will not come close uh, to being able to, to deal with what we are dealing with. So we're working on our resilience committee, COSLA, the Confederation of Scottish Local Authorities, is represented, uh, as is the Scottish uh, Police have Service. You, have you passed that money down to Scottish it, local this authorities? Is not, this is not how we, we, we give local authorities a global uh, budget. So all of the resources we have, whether whatever it comes from in terms of the UK government, we allocate that to priorities and we are working very closely with Scottish local authorities 
so that collectively, jointly, in partnership, we're planning for no deal. Is no deal the moment when another Scottish independence referendum becomes absolutely inevitable? Um, I think another Scottish independence referendum is going to happen. Nothing in this life is absolutely inevitable, but I think it's as inevitable as, it, as it's possible to, to be. I, it, Before I set forward a path forward for Scotland, I think it's reasonable for me to know what the starting point of that journey is going to be in the context in which we are going to be embarking on it. And, you know, we need to know, and hopefully we will know this over the next uh, few days and the next three weeks, is the UK leaving the EU? Is it leaving with a deal? Is it leaving with no deal? Or is it not leaving at all, perhaps looking at another referendum? But the experience of the last, what, almost three years now, Scotland vote ignored, the voice of the Scottish Parliament ignored, all of the consequences of COVID and Brexit completely out with our control, that really does make the case for independence very, very powerful. It now does look inevitable that any Scottish independence referendum would happen after we've left the EU. Therefore, Scottish voters will be saying outside the EU, but also outside the British market, which is quite a big ask. Well, Scotland shouldn't have to choose between the UK market, which is important. It's important to Scotland, it's important to the rest of the UK to continue to trade in the Scottish market. We shouldn't have to choose between that and the European single market, which of course is eight times bigger than the UK market. I want Scotland to continue to trade in both. We have a major drive just now to grow our exports to Europe. We're setting up new investment hubs and capitals across Europe. I want to see us continue to do that, as well as remaining open to people from Europe to come to Scotland. And given where we are now, would an independent Scotland apply to rejoin the EU? I would want to see an independent Scotland uh, rejoin the EU. One of the big ironies, which we've spoken about before, is in the independence referendum, those who were uh, against Scottish independence said, you can't have independence because you'll get thrown out of the European Union. Quite an irony that uh, not too much uh, further on we're facing being taken out against our will.